Hi guys, Olive here. I am joined today by my wonderful husband, Tony. Hi. He's been in a few videos in the past, but not for quite a while. And we thought we would do this video today for Nonfiction November because both of us read the same book, mm -hmm. more or less at the same time, called Every Tool's a Hammer, Life is What You Make It by Adam Savage. I chose that book for the design challenge for Nonfiction November. Adam Savage was a co-host, one of the co-hosts mm -hmm. of Mythbusters on Discovery. I used to love that show. That so was great. Much. Is it on Netflix right now? They have a bunch of collections of just random episodes that they have assorted. Yeah, we've been so, watching one or two ever yeah. since we went to a talk that Adam Savage gave for this book. I think it was a part of a larger book tour. Mm -hmm. He came to Pittsburgh and did a talk and we went. And as a part of the ticket price, we each got a hardback of mm -hmm. the book, which was a really good deal, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> so we decided that we would both read it at the same time because we both had a really big reaction to the talk that he gave. Oh, his talk was so good. It was one of the best that we've ever Ugh. been to. At the talk that he gave, he spoke about a lot of things that he also addressed in the book. So a lot of things about being a maker is what he calls it. He also has a wide range of de definitions of like, what a maker is. That was the thing that caught my attention most at the start of the talk because I went because he was on Mythbusters and because I really like him and the yeah. idea of reading his book was fascinating. But I definitely had the opinion that, well, I'm not a maker. I'm interested because it's Adam Savage, but I don't make things myself. And right at the beginning of the talk, it felt like he was singling out every single person, including me, who thought that way. Yeah. Where he's like, you're a maker if you cook, if you bake, and if I love you that. sew. Like all the different crafting things that you would think of, he considers that making. So in his book, and obviously in the talk as well, he has a bias towards prop building mm -hmm. because that's what he does. That's what all of his experience is in. He really wants everyone who makes things and creates things to consider themselves a maker and mm -hmm. consider it a creative process. And you don't have to count yourself out from being creative just because you think that the things that you enjoy doing aren't part of that classification. Yeah, his definition encompasses if you make anything at all, whether it's yeah. physical props, you write poetry, or you write yeah. screenplays, anything that encompasses the act of creation of something to some degree, whether it's something physical or something abstract, like you're a maker, that's it. Yeah. And it's funny because right beforehand, just to go back to what you were saying about the target audience, I was in the bathroom and there were like three or four guys in there and they were like, man, I bet everybody in this audience has had a lot of paint on their clothes at some point. Like them try to like, like trying to like assume the kind of people like, like yeah. cause these guys were, I mean, that's not a wrong assumption. It's not a wrong assumption, but that yeah. I'm just, that just tied directly into when he was like, Hey, you know, it's it, more than just one thing. This is more inclusive than you might think. Yeah. So that was really nice to hear. Yeah. Like we don't have a shop. No, we don't woodwork. We don't have those types of skills. Though I'm not, I I'm not I handy. No, neither one of us are handy. No. That's, that's, not, that's not who we are. I can build a computer, but that's it. But I think it really spoke to both of us when he kind of included us in that club. It really took me aback for a moment because there was a moment of realization of like, oh, I make YouTube videos. That, yeah, that probably you. also yes. applies to me. And then I was elbowing Tony at so many different points because Tony is an incredibly creative person. I've always considered him to be the creative one of the pair of us, but he does a ton of different stuff. Yeah, I've just been doing a bunch of different creative things my whole life. I mean, I'm, I learned how to play the piano. I was in marching band in high school, so I have mm -hmm. some musical experience. Um, I've been writing on and off throughout my whole life. I'm working on a novel right now. Um, and then I made games a couple years ago, just a couple things, just, you know, just to have fun with it. Yeah. Um, so a lot of the things he was saying about the process of iteration when you're working on something, you know, just because you work at something and it doesn't come out exactly the way you want it to, that doesn't mean you failed necessarily or that it's over. It's just, yeah. it's, it's a step in a series of several iterations to get to what you, what you want. And I think that's something that's very important that needs to be taught. Yeah, people to, need to say that more. Yeah, they need to say that more because I, one thing I struggled with and still kind of struggle with, but I'm further along than I've ever been, is this idea that your first pass at something isn't it. Like, just mm -hmm. because... Definitely just, with writing. Yeah, just because you, you write something and it's not 100% the way you saw it in your head doesn't mean that... This is garbage now. This is garbage, really and I've only had, I only have one chance at this, so... Deleted. Yeah. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I think this is a good moment to mention that a lot of the things that he talks about in this book, a lot of the lessons that he's learned from being a maker for so many years of his life, 
so many of those lessons can be applied to life as well. That was mm -hmm. one of the things I absolutely loved about this book because that creation is iteration idea. You are not going to have everything figured out the first time you do anything. Mm -hmm. no. You are going to have things that you try that don't work, that you need a few tries to actually get working in your life. Like I had a few false starts with lots of different things in my life, and I'm sure I will have more. And as you get older, at least as I've gotten older, it doesn't feel like failure like it did no. back when I was in my early 20s. Now that I'm 30, it's really nice to have that burden lifted where I'm just like, that was just me trying something out. Why would I consider that failure? Yeah, you take pressure off of yourself. And I think part of it is you take yourself less seriously yeah, when you that get too. older. That too. That's kind of nice. You're just more concerned about getting things to, to work, to, to be stable and yeah. happy. and You having just turned 30 and be speaking as someone who is 32, I'm just like... Oh, yes. His mounds of experience in his 30s. <laughs> yeah. I know everything. <laughs> like, as a wise 32-year-old, let me tell you, youngster. <laughs> but yeah, at a certain point, he's talking about his son and how his son came to him with this idea of a project. I'm forgetting exactly what it was. <sighs> But Adam Savage is basically yeah. like, be prepared to make it several times. And his mm -hmm. son's like, no, no, no. Like, I can I can get it the first time. And he ended up making it, I think, four times yeah. until he had it exactly the way he wanted it. And I think that's so valuable for kids to learn that. Don't expect anything to be perfect in a first pass. It doesn't need to be. No, it doesn't. And if that takes the pressure off, then you can enjoy the process more. And you know you can go back to it. Yeah. So you can just be writing. Yeah. know that you can go back and edit it. Yeah, like there's stuff right now in the thing I'm writing where I know that the world building is going to need to be fleshed out. And mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm thinking of it as like little cracks where I'm going to need to go back and... Spackle. Spackle, right, yeah. exactly. <laughs> so these concepts he talks about in the book, there's two different sides to them and they can be, you know, you can talk about it within a specific domain, but then mm -hmm. they also apply across all creative domains. Really. He really works hard to do that. Yeah. He obviously lives very much in the physical creation space. Mm -hmm. But he tries to consider all different types of makers because, I mean, he's writing this for makers. He wants everyone to feel like a maker. And he does such a good job really of that does. the whole way through. You feel included the whole way through. Yeah. Because I was able to bring in my experience of I, I do some writing, but mainly making YouTube videos. And I was able to see where things applied to me. Whatever your creative process is, I think you'll find things for yourself in here. Yeah, for sure. It's also just really cool to spend some time with Adam Savage. Mm -hmm. um, it is it is really interesting though, because I did go through parts of the book. I read the physical book and then in other parts I was listening to the audio book. <laughs> he has such a sweet voice. Like I know that sounds <laughs> condescending, but it's really not. Like he's just, he's just jolly. Yeah. He gets like little boy excited about things. And in a part of the book, he's just talking about all these different types of glue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So there are definitely parts where he is more talking about the physical types of creation because that's where he lives. Yeah. As we said, a lot of the other parts could be applied to anyone, but there are those parts that are just about the physical making. And yeah, there, there's a whole big section where he's talking about different types of glue. For like maybe five to ten pages. For a while. For a while. And Tony was reading the physical copy the whole way through. Meanwhile, I was listening to the audiobook. Yeah. Tony found that section to be a little bit of a slog. Yeah, I, I gotta I gotta admit, like I was reading it and I was looking for there to be some dual meaning that kind of was there throughout the book. And I wasn't getting like, it no, right it's just away. About glue. But uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was reading it and I just went, is there no, this is, he's just, he's, he's just, just talking, talking about, about different kinds of glue. Okay. Yeah. And then I just kind of allowed myself to, to skim and get past that part. But, yeah. but you, you had yeah. a slightly different experience because you were listening to it. I did. Yeah. No, I could see how you would be like, okay, is this some sort of metaphor for like the ties that bind or something <laughs> yeah. like that? But no, he's just talking about glue. <laughs> I found yeah. it so interesting because I could listen to him talk about anything really. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so hearing him talk about it, and then he was talking about different types of glue, and I was thinking about different projects here at our place, and I'm like, you know, that might be the right type of glue for me. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so there was there was practical application. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. every that is what's really I love that you said that because I think that that applies to this whole book is that it is extremely practical. Yes both in what he's talking about in terms of making things and creating things, but also the way it applies to life. Mm -hmm. I just loved it. Yeah, it was I great. loved it. I mean, it wasn't a perfect book. It's not something I think necessarily everyone would love. Certainly, if you like Adam Savage, if oh, you liked oh, him on Mythbusters, no you must read this book. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, I personally really liked 
both having the physical copy and listening to the audiobook and kind of hopping back and forth between them. Because in the book, you have pictures of the different mm -hmm. things he makes. And he made, what was it, like a replica of a Blade Runner gun? Yeah, the, the pistol from Blade Runner. I think that's something he's been making ever since the 80s. He works for a very, very long time on things that he is absolutely obsessed with, mm -hmm. which is something that he talks about in the book, which yeah, is really interesting. Cool. It's like the softer side of obsession, where he says <laughs> that you need to be just a little bit obsessed yeah. with the thing that you're into in order to truly throw yourself into it and yeah. fully be a maker. And which, I thought that was... Yeah, which I can definitely relate to. Yeah, I thought it was really interesting. Yeah. As long as you have some boundaries of where you allow it in your life, I think a little bit of obsession I think it's is perfectly fine. fine, yeah. That's what translated to me so much from just who Adam Savage is to this book is just his excitement. His excitement to just be in a room, his excitement to talk about the things he loves. You can tell that he's really interested in other people and he mm -hmm. learns from other people. He's so humble in this yeah. book. He talks about mistakes he's made and he's like, I cost myself a friendship here because I was you know, trying to be a hero. Don't try to be a hero. No. And that's why I say that if you love Adam Savage, you just have to read this book. Yeah. And if you listen to the audiobook and you happen to love Mythbusters, there's a moment where he imitates Jamie Heineman <laughs> in his gruff, monotone voice. And I'm, it's fantastic. Oh, I'm, I'm, I want to hear that. You have to hear it. <laughs> so overall, would you recommend this book? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, especially if you're someone who's creative or you just like Adam Savage and Mythbusters. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. It's stuff that I'm really going to think about mm -hmm. going forward. And I, I guess it was kind of a gift from Adam Savage, as sappy as this sounds, that I do consider myself a creator now. And it's has Good. it's given me a lot of legitimacy to like, oh, the things that I create are actually creations. Like, I don't know why I need someone to tell me that, but I really did need someone to tell me that. And in case you're a booktuber watching and you need that reassurance yeah. as well. We are creators. We yeah. are makers. We make YouTube videos. So if you need that validation as well, that's another reason to pick up this book. Well, thank you very much, Tony, for reading this book with me. I always like reading books with you. Yeah, it's fun. If you have any comments or questions about anything you've seen in this video or about anything in general, or if you would like to support me in my efforts to try to convince Tony to do a sci-fi recommendations video for all of you, uh, you can let us know that down in the comment section below. If you would like to find me somewhere other than YouTube, I am on a variety of different places on social media and the links to all of my profiles will be in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Bye.